it's getting to be that time of year. Well, okay. Ah, that time of year, right? So that's what it is, eh? Why? All those videos I watched, that's your tripod. That's my tripod, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. I don't it's know. It's efficient, who, it's practical. I don't know who gave me that. You know what I feel? I feel like you're Jesus and you're spreading the last supper. Whoops. Okay, no, don't here we go. Don't expect me to multiply anything. But... Listen, like I said earlier, it's hard to have a conversation with you. Chris Austin, leader of the Alliance. Hard to have a conversation because I don't want to repeat myself twice. So anyway, this is what? What's the date? May 27th, 28th? 29th. In another, what, four months? It would have been a year. You've been elected as an MLA. Mm -hmm. So, how how things been going there? Did you, what did you learn from that building behind us? Did you learn something? Is it different when you're as an MLA than being in the lobby and hoping the media will talk to you? Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you definitely learn a lot. It's a, it's a whole different world in there, and that that's what, and it's it's easy to get caught in kind of a legislature bubble, if you know what I mean. Everybody thinks the same, talks the same, you're surrounded by bureaucrats and da 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 And, you know, I think it's important to make sure that you, every once in a while, just hit your local Tim Hortons and you grab a coffee or you get out to a picnic or something or a local event and always keep, you know, keep your roots, keep grounded in what people are saying and what they want and what they need and all that sort of thing. But What's the difference between being the leader and listening to people and being an MLA and listening to people. Well, I, I think as a leader, you kind of set the direction, right? I mean, one thing about our party, I've always said we, we allow free votes, and we do. That was evident in a bill that was passed here. Uh, why motion, why I do I have to be the political advisors? advisor? The difference is you're making more money. <laughs> yeah. But I don't do any more work though, right? Yeah, right. It's like you know, people say, "Oh, you you get a you get a little bit for your leader leader salary." I say, "Well, if you're a, if you're an electrician, do you expect, uh, or if you're getting electrical work done, you should you expect them to do your plumbing, right? I mean, you know, it's not an exorbitant amount of money. It's a little extra, and, you know." You should be paid. Every MLA should be paid half a million dollar a year. What did I? We want me to pass that in there? Try it. Yeah. Because you're not politician. You're a psychologist. You're a psychiatrist. You're walking psychiatrist. You listen and listen. Sometimes I feel like I need a psychiatrist more than... <laughs> you don't do nothing. You don't do absolutely nothing. But you're... You're... You listen and listen and listen and listen! But anyway. Yeah. Okay. Boy, am I doing a lot of talking here. I've had three, two, double, double. Too much. People Alliance. Eight months ago. People Alliance now. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Nothing in terms of what we stand for and what we've uh, been asking for and trying to accomplish. Um, our biggest thing right now is, is see, when we get in, and we we campaigned on this, we want to see the province get back on a fiscal track. We can't be going into that. There's what I didn't know. There's there's states in the U.S. I, maybe all of them, but they're not allowed to run deficits if they can't. If their budget doesn't, if, if they anticipate going over budget, they actually have to cut things to make sure they don't go over budget. That's the states. This That's is the states. Right. But what I'm saying is, it's. I, I like it. I think it's a, a good concept. I think you have to, at some point, live within your means and, and get rid of the foolishness that the government does and focus on things that are important. You know, health care, education, infrastructure, and your, your social programs. Uh, are, are your fellow Acadians looking at you in a better way than yeah, they look, were uh, before eight months ago? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I mean, people will have their own interpretations of what we do and why we do it and why we think the way we do. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we've got a couple in our staff that uh, uh, one I think is Brion. Is that right? Brion background? Uh, Brion. 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 Yeah, the uh, Brian de la République de la Madawaska. Yeah, the other staff member, I believe, is, is an Acadian. And they, they help Who's us that? in the office. What's that? Who? It's our it's our administrator in Who's the that? office. Who's that? Um, we've got Susie and we've got uh, Andrea. 
you probably wouldn't have met them. They're in the office. They, okay. they do office work, and they're doing a great job. You know what I mean? And we've always said it's not about – we don't care language or culture whatever. Be who you are. But at the end of the day, the government has to deliver services that works for everybody. And I, and I know I keep going on about this, but I'll bring it up again. Language commissioner? Uh, yeah, that – no, I'm talking about paramedics is what I want to ah, refer to. Paramedics. So you've got you've got Francophone paramedics in the north right now. There's six six positions in the north in St. Quentin where all the issues are. Six positions that are not being filled. And you've got multiple Francophone paramedics that don't speak good English that can't get those positions in St. Quentin. You sure about that? Positive. Very valid information. Really? Yep. Because so they, can't, works, speak, they can't speak proper English? They're, they're not good at English. They can speak English, but they're not good at it. But they're working in St. Quentin. They're working in, in, in a Francophone region of the province, right? So, and I've always said I will fight as hard for those folks as I will for English paramedics, you know, that, that struggle to get permanent full-time work. Now, I did hear as well from, from the paramedics that, you know, because of the changes we made, that uh, there are many of them now that are getting permanent full-time work with this floater position thing. So we're getting some, it's not everything we want, but we're getting some traction on some of these files. I did a video behind an ambulance a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I saw, oh, I, don't mean, I shouldn't laugh at that, but, uh, that was, well, no, but you know, only you would do that. Only, right? I mean, and I was really, you know, when I mean, you take a seizure, it takes a lot out of you. I bet, yep. Three seizures in a couple of hours. And you know what? I woke up, there's these two guys, and the first thing I said, where's my dog? I had to bring the dog in the ambulance. And I said, you don't have to be... They let you bring the dog in the ambulance? Yeah, the dog, the dog went in the ambulance. Oh, really? See, I was okay and all that. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no, it was, uh, good, it was good. And I said, you don't, you shouldn't be, have to be bilingual to be a paramedic. I woke up. They took care of me. Yep. At the hospital, they dragged them in there one by one. And just to... The paramedics are unsung heroes. No, they are. I agree. Wholeheartedly. <coughs> Is there any reporters? I'm not mentioning no names. I'll let you do it. Any reporters you don't talk to in there or pisses you off? Well, <laughs> now you're going to get me in trouble. No, no, that's up to you. I didn't say a word. Well, you know that there was a CBC report that came out there a few weeks ago. Well, no, a few, few days ago, actually. What? And it was just like, come on. You know, it was just, it, was, it was so, it was I won't so tell ridiculously anybody. This biased. Is off, off, off the record. Go well, ahead. Well, it, it apparently was an analysis, right? I mean, go to CBC, you can read it about, you know, basically how we're all talk and no action, da da da. What the report didn't state was that we voted, uh, we, we were going to vote down one of the, the bills that the Tories had proposed, and because they knew we were going to vote it down, they pulled it back. They didn't state that we voted with the Greens on the Electors of the Act so that it would go to second reading so we can take it to committee, ones that the, board, the Tories voted down. It didn't, it talked about you know us running the clock on this arbitration motion. It's complete nonsense. Michelle and Rick both gave up time so that we could get that motion on the floor. It wasn't us, it was the Liberals before that that ran the clock, it was the Tories the, the latest time that ran up the clock. So anyway, I could poke holes all through the story, but, and then, uh, Anyway, there was another favorable story that came out shortly after that, I don't know, it's Ed? just, it's just, it's just the mainstream media, they just, they gotta, it, it's like, it's no different than someone in business, they gotta sell a product, they gotta, you know, wrap it the right way, so people will buy it, and that's kind of what the media does today. Are you still known as bigots? No. Do you think I'm a bigot? No. Definitely, definitely no. You're a good person. You're a for when I found out you were a former pastor. And I found that out eight don't, years ago. Don't hold that against me. No, but you you have a good heart. You have a good loss of patience. I've been trying to make you lose your temper with me for many times. And I fail all the time. Mm -hmm. I talked to somebody yesterday, Danny Waters, and videos on online mention people lies. Oh, they're a bunch of bigots, racists, mm -hmm. blah blah, just a, a brand new pair of diapers. <laughs> and that's it, you know. Oh, Daddy Waters, he's hilarious. But did you get that percep perception? No. The anti-French thing. Do you think that? No. What it is, Charles, it's the same old story. I mean, when you talk about the language issue, you've got a whole chunk of people, the majority of people in the middle, they know their issues with it. French or English alike, they know there's issues with it. And they just want government to do reasonable things. 
All right, common sense. Apply some reason to this stuff. And then on the fringe, you got people that are completely anti-French. Then you get completely anti-English. Anti-English, right? And and so if you just get rid of those two sides and look at the majority of people in the middle, um, that's that's what we're trying to do. Is trying to you know see what the majority's saying and and change the province to meet the needs of the majority and make sure that the minorities aren't uh, left out in the cold. What do you think of passing a law before next year that if I run for mayor, I'm saying I've been fighting this for months with Jeff Carr. You fight for, you run for mayor, I give you a million dollars in your back pocket. You don't have to disclose where it came from. And there's no, it's like an Al Capone style politics right. in the old days. The Liberals introduced a bill they were going to pass a law. They didn't. And now the CBC did a story on it this morning, which I did a story. I've been whining about this for three months. Children! And we have a, don't answer that, but we have an idiot as a mayor of Fredericton here. And somebody could give him a million, a uh, hundred thousand dollars. He doesn't have to disclose where it came from. Shouldn't the uh, People Alliance walk into Blainsky's office and say enough is enough, pass this law before the next election or we're going to bring the government down? I don't know if we'd bring the government down on but I agree with, I, I think you got a valid point. And maybe we wouldn't have to, maybe they would agree too. What What are they saying? Have you brought it to their attention at all? I supposed to sit down with this, uh, like this with Higgs Friday. I brought the attention up to Mr. Carr and uh, he agreed then I mean he said there, there's, there's something that's not right here. Hmm. And Mr. Irving can uh, have 10 employees run, pay them a million dollar each, and yep. it's not only Mr. Irving or whatever, it's, 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 it's disclosure. You know, you, sh sh you should be able to, before you have to disclose who donated to you, your campaign. Oh, we, we, got, we got tons of paperwork. We have to follow every, uh, every election. And municipal. Tons of it. And municipal, you don't have to. Where, no, I, I I would agree. Where where do you get this? Do you know? You, do, do I dare tell you where I got that tie? Go ahead. Because this is a story right here in and of itself. Jerry Lowe gave me that tie. <laughs> Jerry Lowe. No, he really did. Really? Yeah. yeah good yeah. for Jerry. Jerry Lowe and Abel LeBlanc. Huh? Remember Abel? Yes, I do remember Abel. Yeah. Ah, step yeah. outside. Step outside. There was there was the people, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, just so. Do you think you're gonna go for another uh, for the whole 18 months, or you guys gonna? Oh yeah, we'll make it work. You'll make it work. We'll make it work. We, you know, they again. My my biggest beef is at times I feel like the government's tinkering with a lot of issues rather than really being bold and making real decisive moves. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, you know, we're 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 making some progress. We're we're getting some things done that you know we've been pushing for. Uh, there's other, there's a bill right now for the Motor Vehicle Act, there's tax reform, municipal reform, all these things that you know we've been advocating for that's that's on the docket. So, how about Rick Desaunier? He uh, Rick's great, Rick's impressing me. I'll tell you, oh, he's great. The the pit, the rock pit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, okay, so you guys you, you make it sound well, we arranged to meet with the premier and the minister. Well, that's not what we want. <laughs> it's nice to have a meeting, but we want action speaks louder yeah. than, than words. But you can't get actions unless you have the meetings, right? Yeah. And for years they weren't even able to be able to get a meeting, right? How so come? progress, right? Progress. Oh, it's politics. It, well, okay, let me tell you how come. Here's what happens in, in politics. This is why I absolutely love the current system in the legislature today, because in the past you had majority government, so the liberals held all the power. And let's face it, even David Kuhn. David Kuhn could have come out here every day when the legislature was sitting and, and had a picnic on the front lawn and wouldn't have made one bit of difference. Because he was just one voice in a majority government. Today, it's a little bit different, right? So we have a voice. Now, whether David chooses, you know, what angle he chooses to go is, is his business. For us, I would rather work with the government to get as much as we can get done as possible rather than be sitting on the outside opposing the government and everything, get nothing done. So this this is a, a, a better setup for the people of New Brunswick. It gives everybody at least a shot at getting some things done and uh, it makes makes parties work together. How's your French? Uh, Ted de Chou. Come see, come see. Ted de Chou, you know what that means? 
Ted, we'll say it again. Ted the Chew. Asshole. Ted the Chew. <laughs> no, I never heard that one. Joe. Never heard that one. Oh. Ted the Chew. <laughs> Ted the Chew. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ah. <laughs> not, not I, him. There. <laughs> I, I like him. Now, for the record, as Diddy Laundry, if he took one swing, <laughs> one of our legs will be gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's an old. He's an old logger, isn't he? He's, he's a, a no logger. His face is about this. This guy. No, no. But seriously, no, Diddy's a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, you have to be a nice guy to be a politician because you won't be elected in the I first know, place. but, and, and, and yes, yes, but niceness is only so much. I mean, the reality is people want results. If you're nice, but you're not getting anything done, you know what I mean? So how, how many times a month do you meet, do you email Blaine Hicks? I don't have to email him, no, we usually just Hello, talk. Blaine, how you doing? Oh um, yeah, we talk on the phone, have yeah? regular meetings. Coffee? Yeah. What does he drink? Uh, well, I don't know if he drinks coffee. I'm trying to think. No, actually, I just grab a bottle of water, and he, uh, yeah, he'll grab a coffee or a bottle of water. I, I don't know what he drinks. It. You know what he got to stop doing? He got to stop going, shaking hand. He's he's been sick, eh? Yeah, David Allward yeah. was always sick. Yeah, always sick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's been oh my. God. Yeah, he's been in rough shape. No, I mean, uh, it's a politician. You have to shake hands. How many times do you shake hands a day? Mm. A lot. Oh. Yeah. You got a, do you spray a lot? Yeah, I do. I use the use of Purell and all that fun stuff. So it used to be Mr. Mm. Mr. Austin. How you doing? And then he, he <coughs> does he call you Chris? <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. You call him Blaine or when Mr. We're, Premier? When we're alone, but I respect his position. Okay, so yeah. how is he as a... I think he's a nice guy. Oh yeah, and I mean, the Premier's, I think everybody knows, his main objective is, is fiscal prudence, right? Getting just, getting the fiscal house in order, which... Just, just like you? Right, which was ours. Um, you know, but, but that has to be balanced, right? I mean, like, like for example, our bill on the Motor Vehicle Act, we say, like, like I ask people all the time, if you own a vehicle, why do you register that vehicle every single year? And, and nobody in that house can tell me why they do it, other than it creates revenue. Well, then why don't we, uh, you know, just create anything and, and, and call it a, a registration. Why don't we register our, our bikes or our pedal bikes or... Uh, mm -hmm. Please don't get them any ideas. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly, right? It's, it's silly. So, you know, at some point you got to say how, yes, we need fiscal restraint, but at the same time, people are hurting in this province and anything government can do to allow people to just simply keep the money that's already theirs... That's what we need to do, is get rid of these foolish regulations and, and laws that have no meaning, have, have no, no reasonable when you guys gonna for talk, being in existence. You know? When are you guys going to start talking about spraying? Uh, David Kuhn has a motion forward on that. You we, support we, spraying? Or? We tried to put a motion uh, to ban spraying, but uh, when we did, we were told that there's already a motion out basically saying the same thing. So we chose just to support David on that. There's going to be another flood <clears throat> next year. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to break it to you. Get ready to put your boots on. Yep. There's going to be another flood. If we had media, which we don't, they would stay all night for a week, work from the midnight, the midnight shift, and go around the province and see all these log trucks driving at night mm -hmm. that the New Brunswickers don't see. That's mm -hmm. why the, the roads are such in bad shape. Mm -hmm. The dirt roads are super highways. Mm -hmm. They just they even got stops, a flashing stop sign at a dirt a road. Dirt road yeah. Now you got a Can't flashing. Can't even get that on our main street, hey? Yeah. yeah, you. I mean, that's a lot of traffic yeah. at night. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And then the clear cutting. It's good. And then next year is going to be a huge flood again. Yeah. And then they'll be, they announce a commission and then, okay, they'll take another year. Come on, clear cut again, more, more, more. Yeah. Can you say anything about clear cutting? Or? Well, it's it's been the question I've been raising a lot. I mean, here here's the thing: when you when you talk about the flood, um, you're going to get all kinds of ideas. I heard everything from Mactaquag Dam, and I've ruled that out myself. I've looked at the information, and I I'm not convinced Mactaquag has any significant impact on flooding. I just don't. It does not have the capacity to hold off enough water to you know have any impact. 
clear cutting is, is different for me I'm I'm leaning more towards it I think clear cutting does have an impact you know and I think it's just from a, a very uh, objective view to say you know uh, obviously if you don't have trees and the roots holding mm -hmm. back the water the water's going to flow quicker and that's why it's been windy and, and ever since mid-october well there's and, no and wind there, there's no trees to stop and slow down there's no the wind. there's no covering there's no forest covering you and know so the, 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 the snow melts quicker and yeah i mean that's if somebody approach you that's your writing chipman mm -hmm. somebody approached me a worker last year and he grabbed me at service new brunswick he said charles leblanc he said yes yeah. you don't know me i work at the paper mill in chipman mm -hmm. Charles was 150, 200 workers. Yep. And he says, the amount of wood coming true. Oh, it's unbelievable. He, says, he said, Charles, we're terrified. I'll tell terrified. you what, you want we're, we're terrified. You want a project. And he said, you, let, you have to, they just take it and bring it in the States. Take yeah. it, bring it in the States. He said, you got to let the public know what's going on here. Yeah. You, that's your writing. Did Mr. Irving tell you to back off? Mm, or the jobs no. will be... No, I mean, look, Ir Irving Irving will do what Irving does, just like any other business will do what any other business does. Their interest is their business, right? And they're entitled to do that. It's up to government to make sure that what they're doing is within reason and doesn't affect the people of the province in a negative way, right? I mean, that's what government does. Business does what it does. Government's supposed to be doing what government's supposed to be doing. So, you know, I, I'm not, I have, I have issues with the way government handles large industry. But I'm not anti-industry. We need industry in this province. But at the same time, it's got to be within boundaries that does not have a negative effect on the people of the province. Have you met J.D. Irving? You mean Jim? Jim. Oh, yeah. Jim. Oh, yeah, I met Jim. Do you call him Jim? Well, that's his name. No, it's not a Jim. Wait, what should I call him? The right honorable? Or... No, no, no. That's not <laughs> Is that, that what you call him? What do you call him? <laughs> no, don't tell me. Don't go there. No, 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 we'll no, stick no, with Jim. No, no. As a matter of fact, Jim is the old guy. He's 90 years old. Jim. No, no, Jim. Jim is, is the son. Nah, nah, nah. Jim is the old guy. Jim Irving. That's what I called him. And then suddenly James, J. D. Oh, Irving, okay. he come out with this Jim Junior. <laughs> okay. And I even I'll send you the link of a video I did. What's, I said, what's with this uh, Jim Junior? Did he what? talk to you? Oh yeah, yeah, no, he writes. He calls me. He talks to me. I even I even had a selfie with him uh, <clears throat> at the State of the Province uh, address. You were there. You had a bad cold. Right, I think so. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, hey, yes. I got, I got brain cells. Oh, yes, he's, uh, quite a memory. And the other one, the kid, is Jamie. That's yeah, the one that's that runs the, 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 paper the papers. There. Yeah. Now he's a nice kid. Oh yeah, yeah, I know them all. I know the leader. I know the premier. And I'm on welfare. What the hell is wrong with this picture? I've always said, Charles. Look, I've told you before. I think you have a gig here that you could you could make money off of and and have a good living. Um, I don't know, brother. We're talking about me, me, me. Okay, now, are you anti-union? No. You sure about that? Yeah. You sure it's not better to pay somebody to pay to clean that building, non-union, at minimum wage, no benefit, than paying somebody 16, 17 bucks an hour with benefits? Wouldn't it be cheaper for you? Uh? Well, of course. I mean, from a fiscal side, I get it. So are you anti-union? No. But at the same time, it's got to be, you know, you got to have a balanced society, right? Um, as far as the union goes, <laughs> you know, that Go whole, ahead. That hey, whole, there's no editing is, here. Uh, care, uh, health care workers. Yeah. Now, you talk about paramedics. Yeah. Health care workers are, again, unsung heroes. Uh, no question. To wipe the old people, they're going to wipe your ass. Yep. Wipe my ass. Yep. Or they're, they, these are... It's but Charles, people. all that we've said, when we, when we talk about the government, and, and, and I want to be clear, the government makes the negotiations. They decide the outcome of this. Not us, not the Liberals, not the Greens. The Liberals could have, but they chose not to. And now they're barking at the government for doing what they could have done. Anyway, My politics. Dad, politics. Right? So, but, but regardless, the, the government has a choice what to do. Lisa all... Harris should take her rhythm. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Huh? Eh? Oh, you, you should see her in the house. Oh, I know. Oh, no. I, I, did you see when I asked her? <laughs> yeah. I was hunting her yeah. down, and I said, are you taking your Ritalin? Go ahead, sorry. Well, she brought that up in the house, but anyway. She, she what? She, uh, oh, yeah. Ritalin? Oh, yeah. She brought that? She said somebody. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. So I got to start her again. <laughs> I, I got to start watching question period. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, I'll shut up. Anyway, in, 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 in relation to the, yeah, to union. the union thing, yeah. all that we've said is what the government's been saying, which I agree with, is any resolution to wage increases should be tied to the public and private sector in the province of New Brunswick. How is that unreasonable? 
Like, I, I, that's the part I don't understand. And I think the unions, the union leadership, and this is what I'm saying, there's a big difference between the everyday union member that goes to work every day, they've got ridiculously hard jobs, and, and what I'm hearing from the government is that the leadership is not talking about the working conditions. All they're talking about is wages, right? So it's got to be a package to say, okay, we need to fix your working conditions excuse me, your working conditions, you know, if you need a, a small increase to some of the lower end uh, uh, salaries, let's let's look at that. Have a have a reasonable approach, but you can't start comparing wages to other areas, other regions. I know, regions that was a good one. Yeah, they, they screwed up. You're allowed to screw up once, but they did screw up when they told Blaine Hayes. In uh, Alberta, they made 10 bucks an hour. Well, and yeah. they walk right into Blaine. They well, walk yeah, right away. Course. They don't like it. Go, go to Alberta. <laughs> you know, I mean, how much they pay rent yeah. in Alberta? No, no, to I, I, I know, and, and I, that, that, but that's okay. But that, but that's what I'm saying. They're allowed right? to screw up. That's there, okay. There's, there's a balance there, and, and it's not if, if it, it's, it's frustrating that if you take a reasonable approach to these issues, who say we well, are anti-union? I'm not anti-union, but I'm, I'm, what's I'm, I'm anti-stupidity. But gotta Biden, be Biden, arbitration. Fine. I'm what's the, we, what's well, the big we, deal? Listen, Thursday we're going to vote for this. Okay, on this coming Thursday on, on binding arbitration. But again only part of my motion was said binding arbitration with conditions that are reasonable to both parties so in other words you're going to look at wages that the public and private sector in this province are compared to rather than comparing wages anywhere else you compare it right here in New Brunswick so that the the LPN down the street is making comparable to the LPN in the nursing home to the LPN in the hospital so you've got you've got something to go with to be able to uh, to get a reasonable settlement with that did you really see when the Premier invited you to his office? Did your jaw drop when you see the financial situation? And you've seen it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've seen it long before I walked in the Premier's office. Did we, you? Oh, I knew for a long how, time it's a mess. How would you know that? Do you go on information on Facebook? Or? Facebook <laughs> for accurate information or for you? <laughs> no, I mean, you can look at the books. The books have been there for, you know. You no, know, but I mean, I mean, the true facts, you know, like, hey. Yeah. This is how HSD, this is what, but yeah. I mean, these are the, there is the facts public and there is the true, true, true facts. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, that's why we've worked so hard with the government and, 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 you know, we've been conciliatory in a lot of ways because we want to see the province's finances getting straightened out. That's our first priority. Now, when you look at the fall sitting and next spring, there's other issues we want to look at, um, you know. It's it's kind of a it's it's forestry is one we want to bring that up. Uh, there's other issues we want to bring up, but you know you, you got to do kind of one thing at a time and not one thing at a time. But you know what I mean. You got to pick your battles. And nah, you, that's not true. What's that? That's not true. No, that's ah, not true. And that's, that's not true. that's not true. Yeah. No, no, that's not that's not asshole. No, no, no. that's not. That's she, not. She's a fighter. That one too. Uh, oh yeah, very People good. People of Miramichi should be proud. She's, very, she's doing a great job. Very good, Michelle. Michelle, they said minute. Nah. I do have to say I've got to get back in. Yeah, 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 of course. When we're almost done. Can I say hi? Yes. Say hi. C'est bon. Bonjour tout le monde. Ça va bien. On n'est pas trop chou. C'est là on a vu Denis Landry tantôt. Ça après il comptait comme ça. Ça c'est trop chou. C'est du coup c'est trop chou. Dis donc. Des assholes. We had some fun. And you got Comme Michel. Yep. And there's no this this anti-French. It's it's getting, you know, I mean, people have to realize that you're a party, and you're a party that wants to really listen to the people. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's, it's, it's about getting New Brunswick where it should be, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's our objective, and whatever. Did I miss, oh, uh, Kevin, were you they had coffee with Kevin? No. No? Cafe? No. no. I, I see him once in a while for cords. Hello, como ça va? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lord's Prayer. Did you talk about yeah. that again? What's all that about? Oh, just... Isn't that called political suicide? Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I just don't understand it. I mean, what... You get up... If you don't want to say the Lord's Prayer, stay in the back room. As soon as we're done, come on out. No big deal. You know, it's just a... Uh, I don't know. I, I... I think we need more prayer. <laughs> <Not But less. laughs> With that, I say we need more prayers. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can't finish it more than that. Yeah, That's good. good. Merci Thanks beaucoup. So. Okay, so, uh, by Au the way, what's your website? Keepuslines.ca. C'est bon.